Hello Seahawks, my name is Andrew Dutka. I'm Broward College Archives and Special Collections Librarian. We're here today at Central Campus to take a tour of Broward College Archives and Special Collections. Now you may have heard the college is celebrating its 60th anniversary this year. Up in Archives, we've got lots of treasures and interesting items. So come along, we're gonna take a tour of Archives and Special Collections. This is part of our Broward College Egyptian Collection. We've got items here that are from um, Egyptian tombs. We've got reproductions here of a different Egyptian deities. And in the case here, I bet you didn't know that we have an Egyptian falcon that's mummified. We also have a mummy's hand on display. Here's a scale model of Anubis. And the original model of this was found in King Tut's tomb. He was guarding the treasury of King Tut. And I love having this here because it's a beautiful scale model. It's an exact replica, and it's one of our treasures here at Broward College. Here we have a dinosaur egg. This happens to be a dinosaur egg that was actually x-rayed at Memorial Hospital back in the 90s. And apparently inside this dinosaur egg is a tiny, tiny embryo of a dinosaur. So again, another treasure here at Broward College. Broward College opened up in 1960 with about 700 students. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that during the early 60s, Broward College was a segregated institution. Um, in 1963 here, for example, the yearbook was segregated. We have an interesting story to tell about the history of the college during the desegregation period. We have an exhibit here in archives about Broward College during the Civil Rights era. One of the interesting things is when we had our two campuses, one was called the Branch Campus, which was a segregated campus, which took place at Dillard High School in Fort Lauderdale. And that campus had its own administration, its own librarians, its own uh, campus president. And that worked for about, well, it really didn't work. It, was, it operated for about two years, and then there was an uproar by the students who didn't want to go to a segregated campus. So what happened was some of the students decided to kind of petition and make a point and say, I'm not going to a segregated campus anymore. I want to go to the integrated campus. So we were so lucky to have all of these uh, scrapbook articles collected throughout the years. So I was able to tell this story of this desegregation effort through the words and pictures from the early 1960s from our scrapbooks. And if you Google Broward College and, and desegregation, you're not really going to get anything because all these original documents are not readily available on the internet. So I'm so happy to share this with our students to be able to really tell the story of Broward College through this lens. I have to use gloves sometimes because the oils on your finger have a tendency to get, um, to smudge the images. Not for everything, but for photographs that are glossy or books that have paper that's really absorbent, it's a good idea to use these gloves. What I have here is really interesting. It's a um, mid-60s picture of Central Campus. Central Campus was built on top of a World War II airfield right here. It's called Foreman Field back in the 1940s. And back when the campus was built, or started to be built in the early 60s, pretty much anything west of 441 was considered you know, undesirable property. So this was property that nobody wanted, and the Foreman family worked with the state, and they were able to sell the property, and then which became Broward College and Nova University and Nova High School. But I love the fact that underneath Central Campus is this old World War II airfield. The planes used to come here during World War II and pick up boxcars of supplies and equipment and then fly off to the different theaters of war. And another kind of funny thing is uh, Central Campus sometimes floods in, in, in sections and that's because underneath our campus is the old tarmac of the airport that was never, um, was never dug up. They just left it and built a campus on top of it. The college is celebrating its 60th anniversary this year, but back in 1990, the college celebrated its 30th anniversary. And this happened to be um, a picture taken for the 30th anniversary of the college, and it was used for the cover of the Bell South phone book that year. Now, I'm probably dating myself because I remember phone books, but our students, uh, I'm sure you don't remember phone, phone books, but um, the point is this was a really nice photo that we took for our 30th anniversary, and we had a chance to replicate this photo for our 50th anniversary in 2010. We're going to do an unboxing here today. I've got two treasures of Broward College that are part of the history of Broward College. And I love these unboxings because there's always surprises in here for you. So first we have here a box we're going to open up. And these are archival boxes. They're designed to make sure the items stay in a stable environment. 
So what I have here is kind of a relic from the early days of Broward College. There's not many of these around. This is called the Junior Co College of Broward County Beanie. And if you were a freshman at Broward College in 1960, and you wanted to be part of the social scene or part of the fraternities or sororities at the time, you were a freshman and you had to wear a freshman beanie and identify yourself as a freshman here at Broward College. Now I'm sure there were many more of these around back in 1960, but I know I have one here and there's also another one that a faculty member has in her possession also. But I love this because it's very, very mid-century, you know, Junior College of Broward County, which is the first name of Broward College. Now another box we have here, and this one I think is kind of fun too. We are so used to t-shirts today and so many articles of clothing that we just kind of forget that not, not everything was so simple. So this is back in 1965, Junior College of Broward County, they were selling sweatshirts for $2.95 or t-shirts for $1.69 at the bookstore. So I'm sure hundreds of these were made, but what's left here is I've got two of them and they're really kind of precious. They say Broward Junior College and the blue has faded, <laughs> faded to this uh, burgundy color, but these are originally bright blue and white and a typical, you know, t-shirt from the early 60s and I'm again so happy to have this um, to display it and show it to you because this is really pretty rare. Some of the history of the college can be demonstrated by the technology. So back in 1960 when the college opened and I needed a library book I would go to my friend the card catalog locate the title of a book or the subject of a book and then locate the book in the collection. 30 years later, in 1990, I had this wonderful CRT screen here where I would type in the name of a book and it would come up, the call number would come up, and I could locate it in the library. Well, today, as we all know, we go to our magic phones, type in some sort of information, and a book, an ebook, an article, a website comes up, and we get our information here. But I like showing this because it isn't that long ago. 1960 was, was 60 years ago. But the progression from this wooden object to this electronic object to our phones is pretty amazing in 60 years. Imagine what 60 years from now is gonna look like. I'd like to show you a little bit of our textile collection here at Broward College. And by textile, I mean Broward College artifacts. Here's a campus blazer or a college blazer from the, the late 70s. It's famous puncture-proof polyester, and it has the old Broward Community College logo on it. And I love this because I've never seen one of these, and I'm so happy that one of our faculty members donated this to us because it really is a, a wonderful artifact and a historic um, documentation of, of Broward College. Over here what we have is a mid-60s or late-60s nurses, um, not a nurse uniform, but maybe a candy striper uniform that was given to us by a, um, a retired uh, faculty member. Again, I'm thrilled to have this because it's, you never see them, and it's part of how our students were. So our students in the 1960s, if they were in the nursing program and they worked in a the hospital, they would have to wear something similar to this. Back before cell phones and back before, you know, the communication process we have in place now, this was the Broward College uh, nurses walkie-talkie. So um, you would be walking around campus and possibly you needed a nurse, so you would, um, press some magic buttons here and you would talk to the nurse and get a band-aid or get some help. But what I love about this, it's a Motorola product and it's again amazing. This is a, like a brick, it's a two-way phone and again compared to what we have today, it's pretty amazing. And this dates probably from the mid-1970s and it was an actual item that was used here at the college. Probably the best way to learn about Broward College history is to examine the student newspapers. Uh, since 1960, the college has had probably about six or seven newspapers. At one time, North Campus, South Campus, and Central Campus all had their own newspapers. Uh, they were consolidated uh, into one uh, newspaper, The Observer, in 1985. But what I love about these old newspapers is, and, and I show students all the time, and I show you, you know, you look at these newspapers, look at these articles, it's really no different than kind of like Instagram or Twitter today, except it's not instant, <laughs> and it took a while to get published. But this is how you found out what was happening at the college. So you would get the newspaper every week and you would read it. But one kind of really funny thing is, when I read these old newspapers, there's three topics that are constantly being discussed in these newspapers, even as far as back as, as 1960. One topic is there's no parking on campus. The other topic is uh, the textbooks are too expensive. And number three, the topic is there's no good place to eat on campus. 
So I can't vouch for right now, but I think it's so interesting that textbooks are always an issue, parking is always an issue, and food is always an issue. And again, you find that information when you examine these old newspapers. And we're in the process of getting these digitized, so I hope to get them online hopefully in the next year or so. So for example, back in the 1960s when you started at Broward College, you could have become a secretary, for example. And we we're so lucky to have these original textbooks from 19, the 60s. This is the Greg Dictation Simplified Textbook. And I've got some textbooks on speed writing, textbooks on lettering, sign lettering, which were all majors and classes here at Broward College back in the 1960s. We collect things like posters, we collect proclamations. So the college, anytime the college got an award from the state or an award from the governor, or award from the president, um, we got those proclamations here. We got the official photographs of the college. Uh, whenever a department moves their offices, we got a lot of their items. So for example, theater was moving a few years ago, went office, so we got a lot of um, theater artifacts that came through. We collect the PANCU, which is the student uh, publication. We have it going back to 1960, and we've got it digitized to 19, or I'm sorry, 1964. It's been digitized to 1964. We've got a book collection here called the Asian Collection. And what I really love, and I'm gonna show this to you in a second, is we've got these beautiful 19th century books that were printed in Japan. They're colored woodcuts, and they're quite beautiful. So I'm, I'm gonna show you that in a second. Uh, we keep this in an acid-free box so it's preserved. We also keep it wrapped up in red tape. And let me open this book for you. It's a mid-19th century Japanese book, and it's so beautiful. We have several of these. And they are just stunning. They're all mid-19th century uh, woodcuts. And what's interesting about these is the colors that you're looking at are over 150 years old. And these colors here were produced by um, chemicals, so they're chemical dyes. Um, if you go back 200 years, um, the Japanese weren't using chemical dyes because they had no exposure to, to Europe and, and the West. Once they became um, acclimated with, with the West, they started using some chemicals. So you see these bright blues and bright reds and bright greens. And again, these are treasures because um, not many people have seen these. Um, and I'm so happy to be able to share them with you here through this tour. Um, we have a table here uh, in archives called the Oatmeal Club table. And it's your basic mid 1950s dining room table with matching chairs and leaves. But what's interesting about this table is it really co connects um, to Broward College's history directly. Back in the early 60s, late 50s, early 60s, um, kind of the founding fathers of Davie and the college used to get together once, once a week or once a month at this table and have oatmeal, have breakfast, so it became the oatmeal club table. But what they used to discuss at this table is what to do with Foreman Field and all this land out here in Davie. And what they discussed at this table then led to Broward College, uh, the location of Nova, Nova High School, uh, we've got FAU out here now. So what I always like to kind of tell people is, you know, you can have an idea, you can have a small idea at a table, but look how that idea grew. So the discussion at this table in 1959, 1960, turned into the institution that you are all working and, and learning at today. The Dalai Lama came to visit Broward College back in 2010. And at the time, he gave this prayer shawl to all the different college presidents that were at the event. So our president at the time, President Armstrong, received this prayer shawl, and then they had it framed, and now we have it exhibited here for uh, our students to look at. But what people don't know, and it's one of the treasures of Broward College, is that back in my, my collection area, I have the Dalai Lama's cookie plate. Apparently when the Dalai Lama was here at the college and was doing his speech, he was sitting in a, in a comfy chair and next to his comfy chair was a tray of cookies, a little plate of cookies. And after the event, um, I received the plate. So we're the only school on the planet that has the Dalai Lama's cookie plate, which I'm very happy to share with you. <laughs> Nothing special, but let's see, it's from, it's from Ikea, actually. <laughs> so again, the Dalai Lama ate his cookies off this plate back in 2010 at Broward College. In 2012, Broward College opened up the new Fine Arts Building on Central Campus. Part of the process of building the Fine Arts Building was the groundbreaking. 
And what I love about this is our, our shovel collection. Um, the art faculty was asked to create shovels for the groundbreaking, for the ceremonial groundbreaking. So each of our art faculty who decided to take part worked in the medium that, they're, that they uh, usually work in. So here we have metal craft, metal working, turn into a shovel into a mask. I love this one here, it's very heavy. This one is a shovel and it's covered in beautiful ceramics, fired ceramic. And then I have this one here, which is also kind of fun. It's covered in glitter, but also has pencils around it here, around the body of the shovel. And again, this was an, an example of our faculty taking part in a historical event, the groundbreaking of our art building, and creating commemorative groundbreaking shovels. Thanks for accompanying me today on the tour of Broward College Archives and Special Collections. What I showed you today is only really a small portion of the wonderful things we have here at the college that make up the history of our college. And keep in mind, when you see the students from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, they're laying the groundwork and the foundation for the future of the college, which in turn is what you're doing today for the future students of Broward College. Please visit us online at broward.edu library. Again, that's broward.edu library. Thanks for coming. Hope to see you soon.